David, your whole life people have told you you were sick. David! I'll show you that it was really just a lie. The human race Amy? beginning to evolve. Amy! The divisions were created by our government to track and study people like you. And the ones they can't control, they kill. They're looking for us. I could help you rewrite the story of your life. Shall we begin? No, I can't. You're the key. The key to what? Winning the war. Is this real? All good in the head now? You have an extremely large amygdala. Thank you. One more round for Jeremy, guys. Here to talk about Thank Legion. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. That's a trailer, man. Yeah. yeah. That's a trailer. That's a trailer. It's a show. It's a show. It's, it's a trailer. A show. The and trailer is like. But that's a, it. You, you, as an actor, I'm sure there's a little bit of apprehension when you're about to watch the first trailer for your show. What were your thoughts when you saw that? Um, the first trailer, or the first episode. First trailer. First trail, I was like, yo, this looks really cool. And all these weird camera things that they're doing and telling us to hold on while they're fixing this and fixing that came out really well. You know, yeah, that it's was polished, like, man. Yeah. It's polished. I mean, yeah. take us from the beginning of this. Obviously, we'll get to your story. Yeah. But let's tell me the beginning of Legion. What, when it first came to you, yep. what was your reaction yeah. to it? What were you thinking about the character? When it first came to me, it was under some hidden name, because that's kind of just how Marvel rolls. They're just like, we're gonna make up a name like Peters. I don't, I don't remember what it was. They're gonna like put some name behind it, and it was untitled. It was the Untitled Noah Holly Project, and FX and Marvel was attached, were attached, and um, they had some sides. It had the milk scene in it from episode two, and another scene that didn't make it in. I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but um, I was just into who this guy was from reading the scenes because it, it also had a, a very limited description of who it was. So I guess Noah or FX was just kind of like, okay, we're going to see who can create something right. with this. Um, and that's how it, and then it was that, I did one tape and then from there they sent it out to people and people saw it and then it kind of happened from there. And I talked to Noah and then he went into a little more depth about my character and his powers and abilities. And yeah, that was the beginning of it. That's awesome. I mean, and Noah, obviously, people know from, from Fargo. He's yep. done an amazing work with that television yeah. show. I mean, were you very familiar with the show or did you go back and binge watch it? I mean, yeah. tell me about your process there. I was a binge watcher. I was one of the bingers. I was, when I got it, I, when I got the audition, mm -hmm. I started watching, like binging and mm -hmm. like getting into it because I didn't really. I knew about Fargo just because of the buzz it got and the awards, and but I don't know. I might have been too young when Fargo the movie came out, so I don't know if I watched it. <laughs> and I don't think I watched it when it came out. Um, so it was just the process of me like checking out his work, and then um, I watched season two and season one, and yeah, I was just really into it. I was like, okay, he takes his time. And that's another thing that made me feel really confident about wanting to be a part of it is, although I wasn't, when I read the pilot, because it only came with the pilot episode, I wasn't in the pilot. Um, I was in it, but I didn't have any lines in it. So I didn't, I didn't have anything to key me in to necessarily who he was. But I knew from watching Fargo that he takes a lot of time to build characters mm -hmm. and every character has something going on. Mm -hmm. So that made me really excited as well that he would, um, that I knew that he was going to take time with this character, and I knew it would be something interesting. Yeah, and you know, obviously you're a working actor. Yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting. People always expect the actors to be working on a show to be like experts at whatever mm -hmm. the basis mm -hmm. material is. So tell yeah. me, did you know X-Men comic books? Were you aware of that DC universe or, yeah? I, I didn't know too much about it. My brother had comic books growing up, and I would, you know, check them out, but I was a sports guy growing up, so I didn't really, like, I wasn't a comic book um, fanatic, so I didn't know much. And then <laughs> the, the initial thing I did was I tried to research based on the description mm. and the sides who this person could be. 
And then I come to find out, obviously, this isn't an X-Men character. This is someone that Noah created. Right. But I, I went on a binge, and I and I thought he was this guy, Prodigy. This I don't know if anyone out there knows him or... But kind of a deep cut as far as those characters are concerned. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I just I was researching like who is this? Who is this X Men? Who is this person? So that was kind of my background. And then, you know, it's kind of hard to research a guy who's a memory artist because mm. there's no one who exists who can remember every single thing that happened in their life. So I couldn't like go back and read about people and be like, oh yeah, he's similar to this person who remembers everything. So it was, it was a lot of it was just thinking about when I met with Noah. Um, he wanted me to think about how playing a person who remembers everything can also be a burden because it you know can seem like something that's really cool like I'll never forget my keys or I'll never forget a phone number or where I left something I won't lose anything but Noah yeah you know, his his brilliant mind was like or how about the fact that you remember every single key that you have ever seen in your entire life mm. and every single lock that it's yeah. ever went into or you know so that how how complex that can be is like what he really wanted me to to think about and tie into yeah there's an amazing like a psycho you know psychological experiment there as far as for you doing that research yeah. and you know as far as the other marvel shows that they have going on right now have you been watching the daredevils the jessica jones is all the movies that sort of thing are you aware of how this thing could possibly play into everything that's going on right now like will it you think will they tie together everybody only wants to know about that I doubt they'll tie together. Legion seems it's like a very unique experience. But um yeah, I've like watched Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and Daredevil. I've seen all of those. So um but I highly doubt that <laughs> there's gonna be any crossover between Legion unless right. like, you know, Legion wakes up and then all of this was a dream, and he's actually in Jessica Jones, and we didn't know. You're that. writing right now. I hope Noah's listening yeah, right Noah, now. There we go. Here, <laughs> Noah, Noah. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so tell me a little bit about your story. I mean, you're a New York guy. I'm I mean, you appreciate guy. that. I can yeah. tell from your hat. Um, yeah, 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 I'm tell, a New York guy. Yankees. So tell me when you first got into acting, when you first know this is going to be your career. Well, for a long time, I wanted to go to the NBA. <laughs> so I was like, I want to be a ball player, and I was at basketball camps, and I was doing all of those things, and I was like, all right, around 15, I thought I was going to be like 6'6". Six, six. I wanted to be like 6'6 six, six and have a 40-inch vertical. I like, like Michael Jordan, I guess, like everyone, and Penny Hardaway. Right. And at a certain point in time, I realized that that wasn't going to happen. And I was like, what else would I want to do with my life? Mm. So I, wanted, I thought I wanted to be a music exec for a while, so I interned at Def Jam. I was like on the street team, like hanging up posters illegally around. Oh, that's crazy. I see those yeah. posters around still to this day. Yeah, you know, but then like fun. a cop stopped me and was like, you know, this is illegal and I could arrest you. And then everyone left me. Like all the people I was with left me and I was there alone like this like kid and he let me go. But I was like, oh, this is, maybe this isn't what I really want to do. Maybe not worth it. Yeah, maybe not worth it. And then um, long story short, like I ended up doing some classes at this place, the Harlem School of the Arts. And there... There, there was a theater company housed there called the Classical Theater of Harlem. And I met some actors there who went to Juilliard. This guy, Wendell Pierce from The Wire. Um, he's a Juilliard guy. And some people went to NYU and Yale and all these places. And then I, you know, decided that this was something that, that interests me. And then I was just the process of building my confidence. And then going to Juilliard is where it really, like, got, I guess, intense and serious yeah i mean yeah. not a lot of actors have that kind of schooling that kind of training i mean tell me what yeah. the experience is for an actor obviously you watch stuff on tv watch things in movies but you don't really know the process you don't really know what you're supposed to be going there looking for tell to me juilliard? Yeah, juilliard yeah yeah i mean it's a it's an intense experience because even after you get in i think at least for me there was this energy of like all right the same thing that everyone else feels like what do i expect when i come here um, but it was it was really intense. We were in school from about like 8:30 a.m. till 10 p.m. every night for four years, and you're um, it's a small group of people, so it's 18 people per class. So you get really close with everyone, and everyone knows each other. But it's a bunch of like rolling around on the ground, p pretending you're a dog or a chicken or whatever it is, and um, voice work, speech work, just all the, the the gamut of things to like train your body for work on stage. Mm. But with, throughout all mediums, whether it's theater, film, or, or television, a lot of the, the theory is the same as far as like, what do I want? What do I need? What am I doing? So you have all of those things that you know help cross through all mediums as well. Mm. Um, 
but it was i mean it was a good experience it was four years so any like any four-year relationship with anything a person a animal a school institution it had its great moments where i was super happy and it had its like more difficult moments where i was like why am i what is going on like i don't like my casting in this play like what are we doing but overall it was such a rewarding experience and just to be working on material all the time um is i think the best part because you're, you're just stretching that muscle and they're giving you characters and they're saying you should uh play this i think this will help you or you should play that that would help you grow as an actor so it's it's those things and I, I feel like for every young actor, it's always great to have that guy that you're looking up to, the career that you sort of want to emulate. Yeah. Was there anybody that you were looking for as far as professional actors already at that time? I mean, being from New Rochelle, I was born in the Bronx and I moved to New Rochelle at a young age. So I grew up in New Rochelle. Um, Denzel Washington is from Mount Vernon. So it's like right there. They're like, yeah, they pretty much border each other. I don't think they exactly border each other, but they're right there. And we have a big sports rivalry, rivalry New Rochelle High School versus Mount Vernon High School and like, Basketball, football, track, everything is a huge rivalry. Yeah. So, I mean, I was always into his movies and knowing that he came from a place very close and similar to where I came from, it it helped me to believe that it's possible to build this kind of career. So he was the person who I really looked up to and, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to emulate Denzel Washington, right? Of course. Was there any performance or movie or play that he did that you were just in awe of? And mm, I mean, I really, I love so much of his work. I loved Malcolm X, obviously. But I think I was such a basketball guy that he got game. I don't know if you remember that. He did like a Spike Lee movie, He Got Game, with Ray Allen. Another New York filmmaker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. New, another New York filmmaker. So that was kind of cool because I remember watching that and being like, oh, this is just, has a good, has that gritty New York, city vibe to it and had like basketball going on all those things so i really you know i love that as well um <laughs> man on fire so many of so many of his roles are are things that i was into and and i loved so well, you got the, the you got the basketball history yourself you should do a, a basketball movie yourself he got, he got game again or something no. like that he got <laughs> <laughs> something original you can do something something original yeah, 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 yeah. i know i was talking about that earlier i have to like figure write something like write like we were talking about biopics. I was like, yeah, there's definitely people I want to play in like biopics. And they're like, well, you know, you have to, you should write it yourself. So maybe the, like right before that, there's a basketball movie in there and I have to figure out who I'm going to be. Perfect, um, man. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I like it. So tell me a little bit about the first, you know, the big gig that you got, that you were in front of screens before, you know, the one that made all your friends and family be like, oh, this is like, this is what Jeremy's doing. Well, it was a process. Like, when I first said I wanted to act, funny enough, my mom, like, hung up the phone on me. It was like, I'm not paying for you to go to school to act. You know, like, yeah. but then she called me back 30 minutes later. I have to say that because I tell her I tell this story, but I have to add that she called me back 30 minutes later. A little retribution later. there. Exactly. Good, yeah. and she, said, she said that she'd support me. But I think, like, I, I don't know when it, what, what the exact one was. I think, like, seeing certain productions at Juilliard, they were kind of like, okay, maybe this is, like, something that he's going to do and, like, be good at. And uh, then, you know, the, a great thing that I did, like, right when I graduated from Juilliard, I worked with Robin Williams on a movie. So that was an amazing experience. I don't know, maybe them seeing uh, me with Robin Williams, but I think Legion is helping a lot, yeah. even though they believed before then. But I think Legion is, like, they're breathing a little easier now. You got to tell me a little bit about working with Robin, Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, it was it was... It was such an amazing experience. Um, it was this movie, Angriest Man in Brooklyn. And um, for me, the best part about it was seeing someone who's so brilliant and so revered still do the work that we all do, mm. still trying to figure out the text. Like, what does this mean? What am I saying here? What do I want here? Just doing all those those things that you can never stop doing because that's part of being a craftsman and, and that's part of respecting the art form and the text. You know, to see someone who has so much innate ability and who's achieved so much not skip the steps, mm. you know, is something you always hear about. You always hear about, like, these athletes who are amazing and, like, LeBron James, it's, you know, he still puts in the work because you have to. There's no way around putting in the work. Mm. So to see someone of his level putting in the work and continuing to do that, um, that was that was just really amazing and then we were in the makeup trailer and I was like hey you know I went to Juilliard too because Robin Williams was Juilliard but I think I'm pretty sure he dropped out like or yeah it was 
I don't know if he dropped out or kicked out, because they used to have a cut system at some point in time. There's, like, all these stories. There's this lore. I heard that it was, like, he did some project. There's things that are still there. I forget. I don't know if it was the Ancestor Project or something. And that some teacher came up to him and was like, you're too good to be here. And I don't know if that's true or not, but that's like the rumblings around like the halls in Juilliard. Is like a teacher trying to backtrack, like he kicked them out. Exactly, he got kicked out. But like, no, it's not. I didn't kick you out. I was just saying you need to leave because you're gonna blow up already. I didn't mean to kick you out. So, um, so I talked to him about that, but we didn't have any of the same teachers, which I guess makes sense because it was different generations. But I was telling him uh, about some of the teachers I had. He's like, nope. Nope, yeah. don't know him. Nope. I'm like, okay, I guess this makes sense. And then it kind of was just, that was it. Now, I wasn't trying to make like too much, you know, I'm not trying to be up in there like, hey, Robin, hey, talk to me about, not you know, it's a work Goodwill moment or anything like Goodwill hunting moment or they sit next yeah, to him. Yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was like, damn. No, he, he did say, damn, you stole my line. Do you remember that? Like in Goodwill hunting when, uh, what do you say? I have to go see about a girl? Uh, yeah. And he's like, damn, you stole my line. There was none of that. It was just cool little Juilliard man turning them back to work. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that story, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me about your first TV project, your first you know sort of experience with television, you know that led to Legion. Uh, well, I was doing theater around New York, um, and that led me to this show, The Get Down, that's on Netflix. And I'm actually going to be Baz Lerman. Yeah. Baz Lerman, yeah. So I'm going to be in part two of The Get Down, but the casting director for The Get Down. I guess she was watching my dailies because she cast this as well. Mm. And she really liked my work. So she reached out to my reps and was like, I want Jeremy to read for this role in Legion. And that's how it, that's how it came across mm. my desk. And then I read for it. And it was actually, you know, the process is always different. And, you know, with whatever project you're going through, sometimes you have to audition three times or four times or retape or fly to L.A. to to meet with producers and you know it's just very different but with this one I put myself on tape I did a self tape and that was it I did one tape and then from there she really liked it she showed it to Noah he liked it a lot and then they had to get the execs on board at FX you know because I'm relatively new I mean not relatively I'm new <laughs> I'm a new guy like recently you know out of school um, so they just wanted to confirm that they felt that I was right for it. So the execs checked it out. And it all happened from there. Um, but the get down was awesome too. The get down takes place in um it's like seventies New York. So I like And you guys shot it here in New we York. We shot right? it here in New York. They put on like a cool little fro on me. I had like cool sunglasses and slick suits and stuff like that and it's the 70s so there's a lot of drugs it's gotta done. be great to like film that yeah. in new york because not everybody's gonna be turning around they're gonna be like that's a normal thing way to dress you know yeah there was basically none of that it was it was kind of everyone was just kind of like all right you know how new yorkers are look there was a room full of new yorkers you kind of just like all right cool what's up you know and then just keep it moving because you see it so much but um yeah it was good to shoot it there and and just to shoot something about the beginnings of hip-hop and disco is Awesome as well. Are you doing any singing or dancing, or what's your what your? No, I play A and R executive on the show, so I don't do any singing or dancing. But I work closely with um, the lead girl in the show, and I'm, you know, I'm helping her get over her emotional burdens and what she has to deal with. So I'm, I'm I work in the music industry, but I don't do any of the singing and dancing myself. Yeah, it's a nice little throwback to your previous life where you were trying. Oh, to yeah, exactly jam, right. You know? I should I should have told research. them. Yeah, I was like, hey, you know, I used to work at Def Jam, so you should make me A and R in the show. It'd be really great. Um, yeah, so it, it was good. Like, I had a good time just. You know, being working with Giancarlo Esposito and Jimmy Smith, just like great people who I grew up watching their work. And obviously Baz Luhrmann is Baz Luhrmann. So all it was a great experience and it helped open up more doors for me. You know, so it's it's all exciting. I mean, he's an icon. I mean, you know, Moulin Rouge and all these things. He's done yeah. incredible work. Did, yeah. What was it like working with him? What's he like as a director? He's, I don't, I didn't actually direct, None of the sh episodes I was in were directed by Baz, but I met him. I went to his house and like sat down with him and talked with him. He just was really passionate about the show, and he had this huge board up with like years and years and years of research. Um, and he was just 
he's a he's an artist. He was like talking through things with me, and you know he listens and he's he's open to to hearing things, and you know he's just very detailed with the work. Um, and uh, yeah, that's 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 the vibe I get from him, you know. And well, let's move on to Legion. Yeah. I mean, you know, Dan Stevens is so incredible. I love Dan, that actor, yeah. man. And you guys have a couple of scenes together. Yeah. Tell me what it's like to work with him and how the whole cast sort of got together. Dan is amazing. He's he's just an open vessel. You know, the the thing I really liked about working on Legion is that there wasn't any ego. Mm. And, you know, and that's something that's I think really important is art is that the work is the most important thing. We're all there trying to serve Legion and this show that we're going to share with the world. So meeting Danny was just he was just an open book and just open and welcoming and just like, "Hey, what's up?" Like, how are you? Good to, great to meet you. And obviously, I first met him when we shot the pilot. So that was great because I got to know him before I even had any intense, you know, and they get more intense as the show goes on, but any really intense scenes with him. And um, we would, the cast was great. We would go out to dinner together and we crack jokes on set. Like, Aubrey's always, we, we had dance parties in the makeup trailer. Aubrey Plaza, Aubrey she's Plaza. so hilarious, yeah. Yeah, so it was... Everyone was just there, and we, when we were confused, like if I was confused and I didn't want to say anything, I would like pull someone to the side, like, "Hey, so do you understand what's going on?" And we all be like, "Nah, not really, but uh, <laughs> we're just gonna rock with it." And that's kind of, because we were all basically where some of the viewers are now after watching two episodes. You're kind of like, "I think I know what's happening, but is this real? Am I in his memory right now? Is this what's going on?" And then we would all feel that individually, and we're still getting to know each other. Yeah. And, you know, it's Marvel and it's FX and it's Noah Hawley. So I think we all f knew what type of product we were dealing with. We knew it was high quality and we knew there was there were a lot of stakes involved. So I think we would all kind of front a little bit at first, like, yeah, yeah, I know what's going on. You know, and then we like, you really know, but I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> And then we'd like kind of powwow together and figure it all out and... And we just trusted the directors. We trusted Noah, Michael Uppendahl, who's an executive producer, and he directed a few episodes, some of the episodes two and three in a later episode. Um, we just really trusted that they were leading us in the right direction. That's all we could do because we're there like, wait, so is this real or is this not real? Like, we want to know. And they were kind of just like, just play the moment. And that's a... And that's, you know, what an actor has to do all the time is play the moment, be present, be there, and find the truth within that. So, yeah, it was that. And and we were just there to support each other. Well, you guys are doing a great job at oh, it, thank that's you. for sure. Well, thank there's you. some questions out in the audience, I think. There's one right here. Hi, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I was wondering, as a New York actor, do mm. you prefer the stage or the screen? Ooh. I mean, I have my training and most of my experience on stage but I really love um, film work as well I don't know if there's one that I prefer more than other more than the other I just really I mean the mediums are different but it's the same the work beforehand that you put in the actual work of like you know being on a stage and having that live feel is very different than being in front of a camera but i really enjoy that the work is similar the the prep work and the figuring it all out so i know that's a layman's but i don't have a preference <laughs> of one or the other i just i like i like acting you know and i like creating and i like that process of you know getting into someone else's mind or their feelings about things it's got to be crazy to have that difference of being on stage and then being able to watch and action sequence like you guys do in Legion, which oh. is insane. You yeah, know, the action about. sequence in the pilot was crazy. We shot, we did it like 13 times, and we ran up and down that hill like 13 times, and by the end, I was like, are we almost like how, you know, you want to say something, but you can't because you just have to, it's, it's your job. Yeah. You have to be like, oh, we're going again. <laughs> and we, we, the sun, or like, you know, there's so many different things that happen that change a scene. Yeah. So just running up and down the hill, I was like, yo, you could have told me I need to get in shape before <laughs> before we were doing this. It's that, that regime right there, training regime right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's CrossFit. Yeah. It's CrossFit. Um, so we have another question right there. Hi. Hey, uh, how you doing? Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for uh, having me. <laughs> so my question for you, being a part of the Marvel Universe now, um, what kind of character, either villain or superhero, would you love to play, like in a dream role? Ooh, from Marvel? Or just I in general. Oh, just a villain comic. in general. 
Or a comic book villain? Any comic book villain. I don't even know if I know enough comic book villains to like answer this question well. Um, someone who's like really methodical and like thought out in their in their evil. <laughs> I guess it's like we'll what I would like. We'll create one for you. Uh, yeah, that, I think so. Yeah. I think me and her need to get together and like put our minds together, but create like someone who's really like mm, evil, but they they take their time with it and they think about it and they like enjoy it. I think that you know that's a fun thing for an actor to play. In real life, I would never want to be that person, but <laughs> you know, for an actor, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great. Well, we have one last question right there. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. good. I wanted to know what character would you hang out with in real life from the show. Oh, I would definitely hang out with Lenny, who's Aubrey's character, because I think we'd have a lot of fun. Like they, they stole a stove, <laughs> you know. That who would who would think to do that? But Lenny, you know. So I think that'll be fun. We'd probably just run around New York. I imagine her pushing me in a shopping cart like they have going on. So definitely her. I think Aubrey Plaza in general is probably a fun hangout. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. There would be times when I would come in the makeup trailer and she's just like blasting music. She's like, what do you want to play? And then I just pick a song and she just and we just vibe out. And, you know, finding that freedom for me, since this is like my first like, series regular, I was like, oh, okay, we can do this. This is okay to dance in the makeup trailer. And it was, it was great, yeah. Well, we can't tell it's your first series regular for sure, man. You're doing an amazing Good. job Thank in you. Legion, Thank FX, you. Wednesdays. Everybody check it out. Thanks so much, Jeremy. For Thank you. I appreciate it. it. Thank you. Okay.